Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Wesley Brock. I am the founder of Ideal Resume. And I'm thrilled to be here with Mary Ann Markowitz today, the senior recruiter and life coach of Mary Ann Markowitz and Associates. It's great to be here with you, Mary Ann. Yeah, thanks, Wes. Great to be here with you. It's uh, been, been fun working with you so far. Same to you. Yeah, it's been really neat. I always enjoy getting to interact with career coaches and learn as much as I can from, from folks in your field. So it's been yeah. a real pleasure. So we're here today to talk about the resume and from the perspective of the candidate, kind of giving candidates uh, a bird's eye view or a peek behind the curtain, so to speak, of what goes on when they submit their resume online. So Marianne, yeah. when a candidate comes to you, um, maybe you can just start mm -hmm. us off explaining some of the work that you do for candidates, and then we can jump into some of our tips here. Well, what I do for candidates, I would say, number one, is a, I, I term myself as a strength-based coach. And that means that when someone comes to me, I'm going to, first of all, work with them on, you know, what, what do you think you want to do in that next job? And let's glean out your strengths. And, that, and it doesn't matter what level. I always am able to uncover things that people say, oh, these are my top five strengths. And then as I start auditing their resume, it's like, well, where is this? I, right. I don't see this accomplishment anywhere in your resume. So that's, I would say that's the number one thing is just helping people clarify what, what do I do on a day-to-day -day basis? Because they get caught up in the TikTok and um, being able to get that out of their mind and onto paper. And that's why I love using you tools because um, what I do intuitively, then you help me optimize it. Wonderful. That is a great explanation of your work. That makes perfect sense. I, I find the same in talking with candidates. Um, sometimes there's candidates who have had so much work experience that, like you said, it's hard for them to Kind of distill that down into their resume and define exactly what they did so yeah i can i always say that our tool with ideal resume does not by any means replace career coaches it, it complements their work because it oftentimes does take that human element to help someone to draw somebody out and again mm -hmm. find and identify the ways that they've used different skills uh, throughout their career yeah and sometimes they just don't even understand what's important in the marketplace right absolutely yeah well, that's why we're here today. It's exciting to talk about this. We're going to look at some specific practical tips that highlight what, what you do for candidates, Marianne. And then also we're giving tips to candidates to help them understand the process that goes on when they apply online so that they can see why it's so important to, to take the time to go through this sort of resume optimization and working with someone like yourself and in supplementing that work with a tool that can help them tailor and optimize their resume for the modern application process. So I'll go ahead and jump into our little presentation here, Marianne, if that sounds good to you. And feel free to jump in at any point if you have anything you want to add or questions you want to raise that you think will benefit the candidates. Okay. Yep. So here on this page, what is an applicant tracking system? So some candidates may be familiar with the concept of an applicant tracking system. Others may not. It's also known as an ATS for short. And here's an interesting point. Uh, many companies, they receive more resumes than they can actually read. So even a big company, as we see here, like IBM, they probably have a large HR department with several people who are responsible for recruiting talent and uh, having interviews and so forth. But IBM reportedly in 2020 received 3 million job applications. So mm -hmm. even in a company that has a large HR team, they can't possibly read 3 million resumes manually, one by one. That's why these systems exist, applicant tracking systems. They're designed to help companies to collect, sort, and rank the high volume of resumes that they're receiving. So knowing that that's the case, then how, how can you spot if your resume is going into one of these pieces of software, one of these systems that is being used to rank and filter resumes before humans even see them? There's a neat little trick here that candidates can do. Um, and on the screen here is just names of different applicant tracking systems. One of the big ones is Workday. Perhaps we've uh, maybe all heard of that one at some point. They're a big company, but there's lots of different ones. So here's the little trick that you as a candidate or anybody can use to see if their resume is going to an ATS. I've just pulled up Target here as a big company, Target Careers. This is their corporate jobs. And um, this could be any career site. So whatever company a candidate is looking to apply to, if you're on their career site, 
Here's the interesting little trick you can do. You take a look at the URL at the top, and here we are, as we would suspect, on target.com in their job section. And if we click on any old random job and just pick in the first one that popped up there, we're still again here on target.com, but watch what happens after we click the apply now button here. Suddenly we're leaving target.com and we're off to workdayjobs.com. Well, what is Workday? Well, as we saw back in our presentation there, that's one of the big applicant tracking systems out there. And if we were to go look at workday.com and read through what products they offer to big companies like Target and others, one of them is candidate ranking and in taking in resumes and filtering them so that an HR department at Target, for example, can manage that high volume of resumes that they're likely receiving. Mm -hmm. So for a candidate, knowing then that their resume is likely, if applying online, going first to a piece of software and not a human, well, what can the candidate do about that? What can they do to effectively um, give themselves the best chance of being noticed? Well, one other quote here actually I wanted to share. This one is, is interesting. It uh, comes from Harvard Business School in a report that they released uh, just a few months ago. And this quote is really says it all. It says, these systems, referring to applicant tracking systems, are vital. However, they are designed to maximize the efficiency of the process. That leads them to hone in on candidates using very specific parameters in order to, here's the key point, minimize the number of applicants that are mm -hmm. actively considered. As a result, yeah. they exclude from consideration viable candidates whose resumes do not match the criteria. So that right. is the key point for any candidate out there to know that what is on their resume is extremely important and the finest details can make a big difference because these systems are set up to look for specific pieces of criteria and that is what's being used to rank which resume is seen as a good match and which ones are not seen as a good match and never called for an interview. Right, right. I've likened it, Marianne, to, to Google search, something that we all do. We're all familiar with going on Google to search for something. And mm -hmm. when we type in a phrase that we're trying to get information on, the first page of results is probably all we're going to look at. But in the background, Google, and in, in the fine print there, it sometimes will say uh, 1 billion results or 1 million results or however many results for that one phrase we typed in, whether it's a, mm -hmm. a cooking recipe or looking for a new pair of shoes. But the reality is out of all those potential results, most of us just focus on the first page of results. And we, we go with that. We don't click through every single page. It's kind of similar mm -hmm. in the world of an HR department. There might be, as it was with IBM, 3 million resumes. They're probably not going through all of them. They're going to look at the ones that are put in their ATS dashboard like Workday as the best matches and start with those. So what then can candidates do? That's where we want to jump into some of these practical tips and touch on how you do this, Marianne, for candidates and how I do a resume kind of helps um, supplement supplement that and mm -hmm. expedite the process. All right. So looking here at this slide, where to place skills in your resume. So if you are a candidate, you have probably seen a variety of resume templates out there. And I know Marianne can attest to this. There are so many different places that you can go to find a resume template, but does it matter which one you Stay use? Off of Etsy. That's my new one now. Stay off of Etsy. They, they've got like a million templates for resumes. And I can guarantee you, we could probably buy 10 of them and none of them would get through applicant tracking systems. They look cool. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's called being put into the penalty box. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great, great point, Marianne. There are many of them that do look aesthetically attractive. They look pleasing to the eye. So it's easy for a candidate to get caught up in, hey, that one looks nice. I'll go with that one. And yeah. I always tell candidates that if, if you happen to know your resume is going directly to a human, so maybe on the rare occasion where you might be handing it off to an actual uh, HR manager, or maybe you're emailing it directly to them, perhaps in those ca cases you could, but the vast majority of the time you want a resume template that is going to play well with the software that's going to be reading it before the humans. Yeah. So let's look Very at a couple of tips here. If we jump over to this screen, I pulled up a couple of those examples, Marianne, that you mentioned there that you've probably seen many of your candidates come to you with. Uh, these mm -hmm. are templates. One comes from Canva. I'm using Canva for our little presentation here on purpose okay. because it's a popular tool for so many things related to graphic design and marketing and yeah. so on. And now mm -hmm. even resumes. So there's a resume right. template that comes from Canva. This one comes from a popular resume builder out there that I see a lot of candidates using. 
And uh, one of them also comes from Microsoft Word. You can get templates in there, of course, too. And, and these are all bad ones. And these are all bad ones. You're absolutely right. These are all yeah. bad ones. And I'm going to point out a couple of specific tips for our candidates watching so that they understand why we say that these are bad ones. Mm -hmm. So one is that there are multiple columns. An applicant tracking system is trying to read, so to speak, the text of your resume, just like we do. It's going to copy it, so to speak, and then paste it into their system. It's, so it's trying to extract the, the data that's in your document and then put it into a standardized way into their system so that it can rank all of these different resumes. But resumes with multiple columns like this, it struggles to extract that data. So if we were to copy the text here and try to paste it, like if you were highlighting it all, it struggles right. to get multiple columns as we all would know if we were doing that ourselves. Same goes mm -hmm. for the ACS. It's gonna get the information mixed up and mismatched with multiple columns as seen in that example. Same goes for this one and our third one over here. The other big flaw and, here is this mm -hmm. one here with these skills. I see this more and more, and you probably do too, Marianne, with templates that are using little charts to represent data. This mm -hmm. little chart here does not tell an ATS or a human for that matter, anything about what this candidate really has in terms of experience with accounting or growth hacking or presenting or any of these skills that has listed here. Right. So the question then is, well, where do the candidate skills really belong? And of course, Marianne, this is what you work with them on. But we're going to present it for our candidates so that they can understand why you uh, work with them in the way that you do and putting skills into their work history. And this one is a real eye opener for many candidates. The applicant tracking systems out there and humans for that matter are looking to associate dates of experience with skills in the mm -hmm. resume. So a resume that has skills in a separate section like this it's okay if you want to do that in some instances for candidates, but the reality is none of your skills should be listed exclusively in a separate skill section. If you're going to use those, they must also be included in the work experience section. And the reason is the ATS is going to take the date, as we've highlighted here in our little fictitious resume example, and then it's going to as associate that date with any skill that you list in that subsequent work experience. So in this case, this candidate would be identified as having five years experience from we see with our dates there with affiliate marketing or any other skill listed there. But mm -hmm. if this same candidate put that skill in a separate skill section like this, the ATS would might find that skill, but it would say zero experience with it. Same goes yeah. for this little chart data here representing the skills. It would say zero experience. So this one is huge for candidates. It can make all the difference, especially in jobs where there is a requirement for a certain amount of experience. If you've got right. those skills in these sections, you're going to ruin your chances of getting an interview for that job. So that's one of the biggest tips for candidates to understand. Uh, and then they can understand why you do that with them, Marianne, that those skills must be included in the work experience section. All right. So looking here at our templates, a couple of tips there, we touched a little bit on them, but the things to avoid are columns. Candidates don't want to be using multiple column resume templates. Don't have graphics and pictures. Keep it simple so that the ATS can properly take in the, the information from your resume. Don't represent data with charts and avoid any of those non-standard layouts that may look aesthetically pleasing, but are not gonna play friendly with applicant tracking systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and you, mentioned, you mentioned Harvard at the beginning and, and um, they're who I refer to for you know, what's the proper format for your resume? And it's work document, contact information at the top, get into your jobs and the, um, you know, what are your strengths and, and do it in bullet points. Because like you said, the applicant tracking system needs to read it easily. And I guarantee you recruiters don't agree on many things, but I bet we mostly will agree upon, you know, get us some bullet points so it's easy to read. Just, you know, we're speed readers. Right. And thank you for putting this on there because uh, it, it's so, I don't know where it came up years ago, but, oh, it has to be in a PDF. And I, you know, I, that's kind of a negotiation point with some candidates. They're like, oh, no, I'm not supposed to ever let you have word because then you can do something to it. Right. So, um, yeah, it's good to have the, the backup of someone like you <laughs> to say, look, you know, you, you may not get through the system, 
a, a perfect example in my applicant tracking system, and it's it's a robust one. Um, if somebody sends their resume in a PDF format, sometimes their contact information not come up may not come up. Absolutely. So you you take a, an IBM and they're ranked really high, but it's like you know Wes. No email, no phone number. I don't have time to go, you know, plucking through there to see, you know, how I can get in touch with this guy. Absolutely. So people lose opportunities because their information, their basic contact information is not even getting in there. Yeah, I know. For a candidate, it's like, imagine that your most important thing, your contact information getting scrubbed from your resume. And to your point, Marianne, it's in templates, just like the ones back here earlier we looked at. It's ones like this yeah. where that happens, like that multiple just, columns. Uh, when you got graphics in the picture there or something like that, graphics behind it. Mm -hmm. Because what the ATS will do is it's trying to extract all the graphics. It is only interested in the text so that it goes into, right. like you said, with your ATS or other ones like Workday. Um, it only wants to put that text into a format that goes into the ATS with all the others. So it's going to remove graphics, background columns, all that stuff. And as it's removing mm -hmm. those, sometimes it also removes the critical information. So the, the way to avoid that is don't put the graphics in there in the first place for yeah, candidates. Yeah. To know. Choose your word format, keep it simple, use your bullet points. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yep. And then to your point there, the uh, uh, Word doc is the best format. The only exception to get is, again, if, if a company for some reason is telling you we only want your resume in a PDF, then sure, you could yield to whatever their wishes are if, if they're the company you're actually trying to apply to. But in, unless otherwise told by the actual company you're applying to, WordDoc is the most universally accepted and universally uh, in, properly interpreted by applicant tracking systems out there. Well, and what I've seen, I think some a, uh, <clears throat> ATS, or excuse me, not, well, would we call Indeed or, or LinkedIn an ATS, but if you apply with your profile or even your resume, that even though they update, upload it in a um, Word format, it comes through as a PDF. And if they have anything goofy, even on that word format, when it goes into the PDF and it comes to me on this end, it's, it's generally just garbage. So, you know, again, it's a phone, it's a personal phone call. If they have anything that looks um, a match for a client to say, okay, what, what's going on here? So that, that happens sometimes is that the systems will add, automatically convert them into a PDF. Yeah. I don't know. Where that, yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, Indeed or ZipRecruiter, they are not in and of themselves applicant tracking systems, but they do have that built in. Because if mm -hmm. I'm a company who's trying to hire and I decide to, to pay Indeed or ZipRecruiter to post my job, part of the tools mm -hmm. I get for being a, a customer of theirs as a hiring company is that they will rank the candidates who apply to my job for me. So they are using an internal ATS to rank those resumes. So same principles of what we discussed here of properly uh, arranging skills in your resume and formatting applies to, to Indeed and ZipRecruiter in those places as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you have some very valuable information. It's been, been very, very helpful on my end. Yeah, it's been great to connect with you, Marianne. It has been a real pleasure. And hopefully those tips are something that benefit uh, the candidates that you work with and uh, again, yeah, all so, yeah. yeah. So the way I'm using this tool is is to help um, my candidates, um, my coaching clients, get the you know the most optimized resume based on our working together. And then your tool is something that they can use after they've worked with me um, to, if they're applying for multiple jobs is that is that the best way to put it or you know different um titles different things where they want to um customize them a little bit more absolutely yeah that's that's really well said marianne it obviously benefits you as the career coach to kind of expedite your workflow it's doing things that you are doing for the candidate but just kind of making it go a little faster for you uh then the candidate you're exactly right if uh, when they work with you they get the master version of their resume so to speak that has following all of these best practices but if they're applying to multiple jobs out there that they're interested in, or say it's down the road a little bit and they want to make uh, some tweaks to their resume, Ideal Resume is a tool that can help them see what tweaks they should make to match a particular job description that they're interested in. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just, it's, um, yeah, it's a 
very well thought out tool. And you've got lots of things coming down the pipeline, but we'll do that another time, right? Absolutely. Yep, we do. <laughs> okay, so those are our tips for job seekers, Mary Ann. It has been a pleasure. And just as a brief conclusion and recap here, applicant tracking systems are everywhere, as you and I both know, and now our candidates watching well know as well but they're not perfect, these systems. So understanding the current hiring process gives candidates a real advantage, helps them understand the reasons for some of the things that you'll tell them on why they should use a certain resume template and avoid others, why you're going to be working with them to format their resume in certain ways. And some of those key points are that they want to understand that there is a need to tailor the resume to the job description, trying to match the right. skills as best they appropriately can place skills and keywords in the work experience, not in a separate skill section as a lot of the templates that these candidates are probably coming to you with. And then finally use an ATS friendly resume format so that no important information gets removed from the document uh, when it goes into those systems as we discussed. Yeah, yeah, so on point for what people need to be hearing nowadays. And, and you know, some of them have been, you know, changing jobs and, and um, it, it uh, might might work for them, but why not make it easier on their life? And the ones who have been employed for the last 12 years and are like, holy cow, I don't, how do I do it now? We've got the answer for them, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Well, it has been great, Marianne. So uh, yeah. I look forward to connecting again. And we give our thanks to all the candidates uh, who joined us and watched today. We're here to help you. Again, make it easier. Absolutely. So keep doing your work. Same to you, Marianne. It's a pleasure. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye, guys.